Good morning and welcome to Rusty Metal Ranch. Today I would like to uh, give a, a brief tour of my guillotine style treadle hammer. The, the reason this came about was because I've wanted a treadle hammer, an inline treadle hammer, for quite some time, uh, knowing it would be a useful addition to the shop. And um, I even had uh, Clay Spencer's plans for quite some time. The, the problem I kept running into was the materials list. I simply did not have the, uh, the loose funding available to, uh, to purchase uh, a lot of the materials. And um, what materials I did have, I could have potentially incorporated into the plans and the design. Uh, but by the time I was done, it would have been a completely different design altogether, and I would have had to modify so many things, and it just was always kind of frustrating and I always kind of dead-ended right there. And then a couple months ago, a month and a half ago, I think, maybe, I saw Colson Child's uh, guillotine treadle hammer on YouTube, and it really sparked um, a lot of inspiration and a lot of thought, and I was able to look at my scrap pile and come up with... Um, with a plan that would allow me to put together an inline treadle hammer with what I already had. Um, and this is, it resulted in what you see here today. Um, I'm sorry I don't have uh, the full thing in the frame. It's a far shot. I'm just using my cell phone to record. Anyways, um, as with most hammers, the, the anvil is, uh, is pretty much the entire thing. You get a good anvil and uh, most, most of the work becomes easy after that. This is two 30-inch pieces of 136 rail. Um, as I understand it, I could have the nomenclature wrong, but from what I understand, 136 rail is 136 pounds per yard. And doing the math, uh, two pieces 30 inches long should be about 217 pounds roughly. The, the cap right here is about an additional 30 pounds. Um, this cap and a piece you'll see shortly came off of some kind of vulcanizing press that I picked up. Um, the holes on the side here were already there and they'll be useful for reasons you'll see shortly. Um, this I had to drill and mill and file to make it fit um, my, my existing hardy tools. Um, all my hardy tools are interchangeable between my anvil, my treadle hammer, and the, uh, the fly press, so I can use pretty much anything I've made for the bottom part in, uh, in any three of my, my devices there. Um, the two holes I mentioned are for this other piece, also from that, uh, that same vulcanizing press. Um, an additional 30 pounds or so. There's a couple studs that I didn't show you that were on the bottom of this piece that line up with those two existing holes. They were they were done like that from the factory of whoever made that press. Um, so now I have an additional 30 pounds, so that brings the total up to roughly 277 pounds. Um, moving on, we have the hammer. Uh, in Colson's video, the the main part of the hammer was a uh, receiver tube along with hitch tube um, and uh, the two kind of interchangeably slid within one another um, that's the same thing with with mine um, one of the big variations is Colson made the receiver tube which is the the bare metal greasy stuff here um, as the uprights for his piece and he made the receiver tube as the sliding part um, I did it a bit backwards. I already had two pieces each, two foot long. Um, obviously, I didn't need the full two feet for the receiver tube, so I just cut one in half and used the two feet on the uh, on the other pieces. Um, also, in Colson's video, he cut one edge away, the outside edge, which is trapped between these two pieces here, um, to allow for a little bit more... Uh, I guess, runnability without uh, having it bind up. Um, I got lucky. Um, I'm also kind of a beginning machinist. Uh, I don't know about beginning, maybe a novice machinist, let's say that. Um, and lining these up wasn't 
too terrible. It, it just took a little bit of effort and a little bit of time and planning and a lot of deep breaths and uh, not getting uh, too excited about getting things done. And I was able to obviously make it work without, without any problems. Um, the, uh, the adjustability, which was an option that was brought up in a, a discussion on Colson's video, someone wanted to be able to adjust it without having to uh, pull pins and actually lift the whole mechanism as an, as an entirety an entire unit, uh, which means you're basically putting, uh, you know, 40 or 50 pounds on on one shoulder and having to move it up and down and drop another pin in. Um, I went ahead and welded a threaded rod and a nut along with, uh, with a stop up there and then just used four bolts. In this particular frame, this is a piece of I-beam from, uh, from one of the big block, block, one of the big box stores. Um, basically, I just took a length of the I-beam and cut it in half and made it uh, a T-beam, one for either side. The mounting holes are four inches between, so I can adjust this up and down by simply undoing the bolts, lowering the nut down, and then retightening the bolts in the next hole down. The, um, the uh, hammer itself between the two receiver tubes, I'm sorry, the two hitch stock, two foot hitch stocks and the crossbar and the hammer part is about 40 pounds. Um, I was really hoping to get the, a one and six to one to 10 hammer to anvil ratio as far as weight goes. Um, that just didn't seem practical given the amount of uh, abuse the machine would see. Uh, I could have certainly made the, the hammer part lighter, but uh, I don't think it would have lasted very long at all. I think it would eventually just uh, bent and uh, been a problem. Um, another thing I incorporated into the hammer part, uh, much like Colson's video, is I went ahead and put a, a round hole for the receiver part, and that allows me to uh, also use any of my tooling I've made for the fly press. Uh, it's completely interchangeable. This one here is made specifically for this. It's a piece of cold roll uh, steel on a one inch shaft that's welded together and then a piece of uh, spring, uh, leaf spring that I annealed and welded together. That should give me the toughness I need to, to constantly drive hammers or you know punches and flatters and, and my touch mark and all that without beating up my, uh, my other tools. Um, one thing I did find when I was putting together the, the sliding mechanism, this whole thing on both sides, was that it, while it didn't really bind, when it was dry, it really liked to, uh, to feel like it was binding, uh, probably galling in a lot of cases, because I could take the tube out and I could see where it was kind of rubbing and, and kind of distorting the metal, a little bit of sandpaper and it worked fine the first couple of throws and then it would just kind of bind up again, gall up again. Um, a very light amount of whey oil from the milling machine and it, it ran smooth as butter. So it became pretty apparent to me that I was going to have to uh, keep it lubed up. So I went ahead and put some grease zerks in. Um, obviously I can't get in between here, but I was able to get, you know, the three sides that were available. Then I can just run my fingers and and actually put some grease on the on the back side as needed. And the with the oil it ran really nice and smooth. With the grease, it actually runs smooth, but it's also a uh, more buttery feeling. It actually has a much more um smooth feel. It doesn't feel jerky or jumpy or anything like that. The springs were another issue that I that I had a hard time with. Um, I'm in a small rural area and there's simply not a lot available to me. Just what's available at, uh, you know, I got Lowe's, I got a Home Depot and I got a couple Ace Harbors within range, but, uh, nothing that had a large variety. 
and I was taking a lot of guesses. Um, I ended up with six of these smaller ones, but by the time you stacked all those together on this device, it really, by the time you got down to the bottom of the throw, it really threw a lot of extra force in. Um, and then as a kind of a Hail Mary, I bought this, uh, this garage door return spring. This is for the old uh, one-piece doors that uh, would cantilever back. Um, I bought a 75-pound version of that and cut it in two. And uh, that actually was the magic ticket. It gave me enough throw without being overly stiff, and it gives me a lot of uh, a lot of room to work with there. Um, so that that worked out pretty well. Another thing that was discussed in Colson's uh, video, or at least the discussion following Colson's video, was the drive system. He in one of his follow-up videos, he discussed wanting maybe to to figure out a way of getting a more more um, velocity on the hammerhead because he had a direct link. His uh, his drive chain from his treadle to the hammer was directly connected, um, and he was saying he would like to see if he could maybe increase the mass or somehow increase the velocity to get more force out of the hammer. Um, of course, you can add more mass, but then you're dealing with the springs all over again to, to do that. And that's just more spring you're fighting against to get the hammer down. Um, as far as uh, velocity, um, it was brought up by uh, user rpower1401 that you could use pulleys. Uh, if you have one fixed end and the other end attached to the hammer with a pulley, you could, uh, in theory, double the velocity. It kind of works like this. Picture the, the end where the spring is attached there, that thing right there, to, to the fixed end there. If you took both those in and made them um, attached to the, uh, to the hammer there, and you push down on the treadle, it's going to go down at the same rate as the treadle. It's only going to throw as far as the treadle will move. But with that right there, it's literally doubling the amount because that fixed chain can't go anywhere. The, the moving chain that's attached to the hammer has to go twice as fast. That's the theory anyways. Um, while I do believe it is definitely more than one to one, I don't have a way of measuring that is definitively two to one. Um, and that, I think, is partly due to the springs I put in the back here. I put those in because I didn't want to hit the, um, the full shock load uh, when, when the hammer finally struck a tool. Um, this allows me to, um, to not have to worry about uh, the chain snapping on me or whatever. It is a uh, Schedule 40 chain or 40 series chain, whatever the nomenclature is for that. And it does have a rating of about 4,000 pounds per chain. So theory, again, I'm no engineer, is about 8,000 pounds of, of force available to me to use. Um, I just didn't want to have to worry about shocking the whole system and, uh, and breaking the chain and having to deal with that. But the, uh, I can say the velocity is more than one-to-one. -one does allow me to get a really good smack on it without uh, without um, any real shock to the system. My treadle is only about 13 or 14 inches off the ground and I can throw that uh, that hammer easily to uh, to do a, a punch if I wanted to. I can easily throw it that uh, 10 inches or so with only 13 inches of travel. Um, and it really does seem to work well. Uh, if you're in the designing stages for your own hammer, I would recommend looking into this. It really isn't that much extra work, and it really does seem to have a, a benefit um, to you in the end. Um, the only thing I would probably change in the future is if you're considering making one for yourself, and you have the time and the patience and, and the means, you might consider um, a counterweight system instead of the springs. Um, this is just kind of a thought exercise right now. 
but in my head, I could see where if you had a, a another set of pulleys like down there, but up here attached where, say, the underside where the spring claws are and a, another chain that came to the top here with a, with a counterweight behind the whole mechanism, you could literally give the counterweight maybe five extra pounds above and beyond what the hammer needed to return and you would literally only be fighting five pounds of downforce um, to to get the hammer to strike. Um, of course, you'd probably want to put the counterweight on some kind of a rail system so it doesn't bounce and jerk and, and swing all over the place. But, uh, but I still think the idea is valid. Um, I just didn't... Uh, want to keep throwing uh, extra things at the project when uh, when I was so close to having it functional anyways. But if I were to, to redesign it or if I have problems with the springs in the future, say they get stretched out or, or I keep going through them or they keep breaking or whatever, I might consider going to a counterweight system just to try it. Um, I think it's an interesting point to consider. Anyways, um, much credit to Colson Child for bringing the, uh, the guillotine hammer into into life, so to speak. It was a great design idea, and um, I, I'm grateful for him to be able to uh, inspire me to make this happen, and uh, I hope this has inspired you to, to do something similar. Have a great one. Bye.